Hi, everyone. Today, I'm thinking that I'm really kind of bored with my artwork and my painting, and I wanted to do something really bright. And I'm also feeling just a little nostalgic that this is the last week of August, and we won't be seeing any more beautifully colored magenta, pink, and those different colors in flowers. We will start getting into the fall colors. Uh, and so um, I'm thinking that, oh gosh, I want to try something different. So uh, I'm going to do that today. And, and this is this is actually the, the picture that I'm, I'm going to paint again. And I really like this. So I'll show you how I did this and, um, and let's get going. Um, oh, and my name is Kay Hirai, and um, if you, some of you who don't know me, that's who I am. And uh, okay, we're just going to get a start. And um, to get really bright colors, I started to experiment with some um, colors that I have. And um, the colors that, um, that I found are... Um, let me see, what are they called? Um, there's a name for it, it's like fluorescent colors. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's just a little bit different than a regular, they're, they're more um, poster paint-like, these colors. And so I have this old set here that I've had for quite a few years. And I also have a Mozart watercolor paints that which I really like and they had this neon yeah they're called neons and they have some neon colors in here also so I'm going to experiment with those colors uh, to find something that comes out really bright so let me show you what I'm doing here I'm just going to draw a circle and see how bright that color is. And I'm just gonna go right here to the one that's a little bit more red. Oh, this is more pink. And that's very, very bright. Yeah, they look like neon colors. And uh, I usually don't use them, but today I feel like, gee, I wanna try something different. And so um, I'm going to start looking into and let's see, this one here is a little, these are the little neon set. I think this comes from Japan. Um, um, trying to figure out, remember the name of that, what that was. Um, I think it is called Kuretake Colors. So you'll get to see what these do. And I think they're both about the same. The intensity is really, really nice. Right? So I'm gonna use these colors um, for this bright garden. I think that that's what I used on this one. I think I used this set for that one. And um, I'm going to maybe just show you how to practice a little bit. So, you know, I'm always talking about using circles and lines. So let's start with that. So let's start drawing circles from maybe using something like this. And let's go ahead and let's start drawing a bunch of little circles, right? These are like a whole bunch of them. Draw circles, circles, circles. And you could always add more at the end if you want to, but let's just get a start here. And this is the way I started my, my prolific garden here with all the beautiful flowers growing. And then we will draw a girl. And so here you just go ahead and draw the circles and you draw all these little 
them so the flowers these are very tall and kind of like that and then you will draw another circle and and this will be a little girl or whoever you want it to be i'm going to start out with a little circle and then i'm going to come down and it's the same pattern that i always use for the body right circle in a body and then two legs two legs and then She's wearing little shoes. And then here, I'm going to have her arms coming out like that. And then she's holding on to a flower. So you could make her fingers like kind of like that. And then you could put the flower stem right here. Right? Just like in the picture. And she's got one flower. And then she is looking up. So I'm going to draw her hair like this, like although she's looking up and then just two little eyes and a little mouth. There you go. And there's a the little girl. And then to draw the dog, I would do a little oblong head and another oblong shape body and then I'll have two ears and then the little nose and then the eyes looking up and then he has a little tail there you go so everything is drawn from circles and oblongs and uh lines so that's pretty much what, you know, you could just kind of compose it any way you like to, but that's the way that I did it. And then I'm just going to try a little bit of my neon color. And um, I would just take one of those circles and I would just go around it. And then just paint it in and just kind of make it little crooked so that you have show leaves. Or if you don't want to, you could just make them just plain circle or different odd shapes. I think any of these will look great. All right. So let's get it started. And I'm going to take this and look at that and look at the original one that I did. And then I'm going to stand them up right here and keep an eye on it so that I don't go too far off. Um, how I did it okay so let's see I think I'm gonna I'm going to do it with this paint right here since I already have it and it's almost all used up I'm gonna use Academy watercolor paper pad today which is um five by seven it's the same size as uh the Stratmore ones that I use but somebody told me that these were really good and more reasonably priced than some of the expensive paper like the arches so i just tried it i ordered a couple from amazon this is a cold um cold press and then this is hot so i'm going to try the hot press today who knows okay so i'm going to start all over again and i'm going to be drawing these little circles and I'm going to do them very lightly because I don't want them to come out real dark. But I think I, if I do it with the pink, I'm safe because I'm drawing pink flowers. And all these flowers just keep kind of be kind of one color. Um, not sure how it's going to be but i think this is okay so here's a bunch of circles it's hard for you to see it because pink is light color but you can see i just put like little popcorns all over not really thinking much 
And then I'm just gonna put the, the stems here, just kind of randomly. I'm just kind of getting a picture of it. And then I'm, I'm going to draw that little girl. And I will start with a circle. Circle for her head. And then her body or her dress. And then she is looking up. And then I will draw her two legs. I'll just keep her legs real simple. I'm not gonna even put shoes on her. And then I'm going to put her arm and I'm gonna make her any kind of like long arms right here. And there she is. And then I'm going to make her a little doggy here with her ears. And another oblong shaped body for the dog, a little tail, little eyes, and a nose. See, that's how simple it is. And all you do is just circles and oblongs. And let's put the little girl's eyes looking up in her little mouth right here. Draw a little circle. Okay, so that is it. And so I'm gonna first start by, I think I'm going to first start by drawing the girl. Um, let me see, I'm looking for my eraser. Where would my eraser be? I had this tiny little erasers with a little tip on them, but as you can see, I'm having a hard time locating them standing. They're probably standing up right in front of me, but I cannot find it. So I'm just going to take this little eraser or big eraser and try to kind of erase her around the edges just a little bit, make everything a little lighter. Because a girl's face will get dirty very fast. So I'm thinking what I might do is I'm going to get my watercolor and um, I have also, by the way, I'm going to use some Posca markers right here because these are really nice and bright and intense, but I cannot find a skin tone in here. So I'm going to use a, I guess, back to my watercolor set and see if I could find a skin tone. I always tend to ruin the faces of, of little girls. I don't know why. Um, they're so hard to, oh, here's my little eraser. See this one? It has a little tip on it and I really like it because I could go in, inside the face. So basically, see, I'm already getting her face dirty. This is crazy. Why do I always do this to the girls? It's probably better for me not to draw anything in her face first with a pencil. Let me see if I could get it erased off really well. Another one you could use is maybe try the water. Um, maybe use a pencil, how would that be? Um, watercolor pencil, I'm gonna try that. Let's erase her a little bit more. Okay, I'm just gonna try this with her face. Mm, no, I don't like that either. It just makes, it's not real smooth. So let's get that off. I hope you're learning from my mistakes. Um, it just, I'm gonna draw the circle back in.
in the hair. Okay, I'm going back to I'm going back to my watercolors. So somehow I just can't seem to find a a solution to this. So it's always when you do art, it's always problem solving. I'm taking a thin brush and I have a right here, I have something that looks like flesh. So let me see if that'll work. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint her face in. So far, I'm liking what this watercolor is doing more than I like the pencils. So there's her face. And then now I have to draw in her arm. Here's her arm. And then here's her leg. And then for the dog, I'm not going to do anything because the dog is white. All right. Meanwhile, while this little girl is drying, drying, I think I got too much water in here. So I'm just going to dab a little bit. You see how I'm using just a very, little, very tiny fine liner. I don't want it to get too oversaturated with color. So what I'm doing is I'm wiping my brush and then I'm going over there and absorbing some of that extra water, the color that I don't want on there. Okay, so I dabbed it off. Okay, now I'm, I'm ready to start. I'm going to start with drawing um, these flowers. So here I am, I'm going to put a little dab here, but I have so much on my paint brush. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go around the edges a little bit and making little petal shapes. Like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't make it perfect. Make them kind of lopsided and kind of crazy and I think it's you you'll notice that when you look at flowers they're not all shaped perfectly right and that's why I think they look so pretty because they each have their own little personalities and leaves aren't always perfect so I'm just going to do it that way non-perfect flowers and when you're doing this make sure you don't touch that part because i'm just letting that dry and they're coming out pretty bright and turn your paper around so you don't touch that that girl that you have already drawn so i'm going to do this group of flowers and then i'm going to see if I could use another color, let me see how this one will be. Let me see how that one will come out. Well, it's not that much difference, but this, this one has a little bit more blue to it. I might add just a little bit more of this color together with it. And that'll probably get it to be a little different shade of pink, which I want. I don't want all the flowers to be exactly the same color, but I want them to be in the same color family. So, there. Ooh, they are coming out so bright. And even though if you don't have this neon colors yourself, use your pinks and reds 
uh, on this one, don't, you know, I always say don't get the colors on too thick, but on this one, I think you should. Don't make them too diluted because it just, you want this picture to be really bright and eye-catching. Anyway, this is how I want to see my garden. So I might just put another one right here. Another flower. Um, maybe another one right here. I just want this to be a really prolific garden, you know, with lots of flowers. I just heard that with the way that our uh, environment is global warming is happening. I just heard a sad news last night saying that we may not be able to have gardens. Uh, we may not have the weather to, or not, not enough water actually. Okay, so we wanna really keep on drying these because we don't want this to disappear, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to take a, a thin brush here and then I'm going to take I'm just going in and taking a deep kind of olive green. I think I'm gonna go for this olive green. And maybe just a little bit of, no, I'm gonna try with olive green, okay? So let's go ahead and draw the stems. And again, don't worry. Sometimes I'm gonna make them fat. Some of them will be thin. And a little crooked. Well, wow, look at how much that rich, deep color adds. And this is really fun because, you know, most of the watercolor painting we do are kind of muted and, and soft in color. And I really want this to come out very bright. There. Now I'm just going to go ahead and um, draw some leaves. Just randomly put the leaves in. And they don't even all have to be alike. Just go ahead and randomly fill in these spaces because you really want this garden to be full of life and leaves and my original picture I didn't really have any leaves in these areas, but on this one I I do I want to try something different and put lots of leaves in. All right. I think I'll stop at that. Oh, I made a little smudge there, but it's okay. No big deal. Okay, so, so far the garden is looking really good. Now I'm going to 
paint the girl's dress. And you could do that with watercolor or you could do that with whatever else you have. I might just try. Well, let me see. I think I'm going to make her hair. I think I, in that one, I made her hair kind of turquoise color. And so I think I'm just going to make her hair color bright blue and see what happens. Let me see. So I'm just going to draw the hair in. I don't know why I always go back to watercolors, but I don't know. They, they just seem like it's so much easier to mix the colors the way you want. It's always hard for me to find the exact color I'm looking for in the marker set because markers only come in set colors and um, you can't mix and match them like you can with watercolors, right? So. I think that's probably why I like the flexibility of the color palette. That must be the reason. So here's a little crooked. So I'm just kind of put it out here. Okay, so her, there's her hair. And then I might just you know, I might just go ahead and and give her a, oh gosh, should I make her dress in purple? Somehow, if I start putting too much color in the girl, I feel like it's going to take away from the flowers, right? And so I'm being very, very careful about that. Um, I don't really want to see. Um, let me see. Maybe I will make her dress more like. My favorite gray here, Payne's gray. I might take that and then I might put in a little bit of the same color as, as her hair color and I'm going to mix it. Now I got this nice kind of a smoky blue, and I'm going to try that color. Hmm, it's not that different than her hair color. So I'm going to try it, even a little bit more. Or if you feel more comfortable, please use colored pencils or markers if you could find a good color. So I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm going to make her dress not real bright because I have so much bright colors in a garden. You don't really want her outfit to, to really conflict with the colors and it just could get to be too much visual stimulation. So there's her with a dark kind of a bluish grayish dress on. And I think that is it for her with the watercolors. Now I'm going to take my Micron 0 0.3. I have 0 0.5. I think that'll work just as well. But some, for some reason right now, this is what I have. So I'm just going to use what I have. And then I'm going to use Copic Black. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put little centers in these flowers with Copic Black. That, 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 that. Now that really adds a lot when you start putting the center piece in and just keep it really simple. I like everything very simple, not too complicating. And I like things that are very quick to make. And you could go on and on with this forever, but I like the simplicity 
in the clean, the clean feeling of this flow, uh, this picture. It's not complicating. It's not any of those things. But it's just so pretty. When you just look at it, it's just kind of, it makes you go, oh. Okay, so the flowers are done. Let me see if that girl is, oh, meanwhile, I think I'm going to draw a, the dog. I'll try not to touch the girl and I'm just gonna go over, over the dog's face with a pen. Like so, the dog has ears. Dog's oblong body shape. And then his tail. And that's all you need is for the dog. Just keep it really simple. Like I said, eyes and nose. Give her a nice dark nose. There's a dog. Um, if you want to give the dog one black ear, go ahead and do that. I, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now I'm going to go and outline the girl's legs. And the legs. And the girl's hand. And then she is holding on to a flower, right? So um, I'm just gonna go like this with this pen. She's holding on to this flower. And then I'm going to draw this flower with a little ink pen. Turn this this way and I'm going to draw her little eyes. Little dot, a little dot. She's looking up and then her little mouth. Right, and then um, I think it'll be really cute to give her a little pink cheeks. So I'm gonna give her a little pink cheeks. Little pink, cute little pink cheeks right here. That adds a lot to the face, it gives us some color. And then I'm going to take the pen and I'm going to outline her face. I just have to make sure that I'm not touching any of the dry, wet spots. Just so to protect the picture, I'm just gonna go like this. And I'm just gonna go Draw right around her hair. Phew, there it is. Okay, so the girl is holding the flower. So let's go ahead and paint another bright colored flower that she is holding. And just go ahead and paint that inside the line or outside the line, either way. So there it is. Oh, I know, one more thing. And then when that's dry, I will put the little black dots inside there. But um, where's my ink pen? I think it'll be really fun to give it some leaves with this too. So I'm just gonna give it some leaves with this black pen, along with the leaves that that's on there. Now, isn't this fun? You could just mix whatever you did with the little leaves. Um, and you might, I might just draw little lines in some of them. This gives it a little really fun feel. Little lines here and there. Sleeves. I like this combination of pen and color because it just it just adds a, just a little bit of um, feeling of casualness to this picture when you do this. And I'll put a bunch of 
you know, some leaves up here. And no need to be careful. You just kind of, I put some other leaves in between. There we go. Did I forget anything? And you can put, add a little dot of red to the girl's mouth, but I, I'm going to do that later. Um, and then I'm just going to go and puncture that little white spike right there. So here it is. Here's a little girl holding a flower from her flower garden. And she's not, she's really enjoying the full um, bloom of her garden right now. Because if you live in a moment, this moment will never come again, right? And so you have to really, really appreciate every moment. And I'm thinking that maybe another thing I might do is um, just take some of that, some of that green, the olive green and, oh no, I got another color in there. I have a color of the flower in there. I might just go pick another. And I might just add, see right here, I'm going to cover that up because just dab a little bit of the groundwork right here. And you could come up just a little bit. There, oh, that looks nice because it really grounds the flowers, right? So um, mm, I love that. So that's, oh, one more thing. Sorry, sorry. One more thing. I wanted to add, um, wanted to add uh, just a little bit of color to her flowers. Is that going to work with this big brush? There. Okay, that's it. Here it is. I hope you'll try it, circles, lines, and ovals, okay? And you'll be able to make this cute little card. So thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you next time.